Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at what happens when we give the consumers in a perfectly competitive market a subsidy. So I'm going to have a look at market outcomes, price and quantity and also welfare, so producer surplus, consumer surplus, deadweight loss and anything with the government. Now so we can do that comparison, let's just have a look at the outcomes and also the welfare in the perfectly competitive market when we don't interfere with it. So just this picture here, we have market equilibrium at the intersection of supply and demand. We have some price P star and some quantity Q star, uh, that's where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. Now to measure the consumer welfare of this market, we're going to have to look at consumer surplus, which is going to be the area below the demand curve and above the price that the consumers pay per unit. So it's just this orange triangle here. Now producer surplus, that's going to be the welfare afforded to our producers. That's going to be the area above the supply curve, below the price that the suppliers get per unit. That's that green triangle there, our producer surplus. Now, if we impose or if we give to the consumers a subsidy of some amount, well, this is going to change the demand curve in this market. So just to revise, our demand curve tells us for all the quantities that we have down here on the horizontal axes, there's going to be a range of prices which is described by the demand curve, which tells us the willingness to pay of the consumers in the market. So for instance, if we wanted to trade Q star here, just our equilibrium amount, just as an example, then the price would need to be at most P star. Now, if we give the consumers a subsidy every time that they consume a unit, then it's the case that their willingness to pay for each of the units is going to increase by the amount of the subsidy. So essentially, if we impose a subsidy on the consumers in this market, it functions to increase the demand curve by exactly the amount of the subsidy. So we have a new demand curve here, D plus subsidy. Now this is going to give us a new equilibrium where we're going to get a new price, P prime, and a new quantity traded, Q prime. Now note already, when we're thinking about the result of the subsidy, now we're trading more than we were before. Q prime is above Q star. Now also P prime, that's our trading price, that's above P star. So the price in the market is above the old price. And so this is the price that the sellers are going to get per unit. But of course the consumers don't have to pay this price because well, after they've traded in the market, they can go to the government and the government gives them some money back. So per unit, really the consumers don't pay P prime they pay some other price, let's call it P prime prime, which is P prime minus the subsidy. So this is the buyer's price per unit. Now, just as a review, now as a result of the subsidy, then we're trading more Q prime instead of Q star. The sellers are getting a higher price per unit, so P prime instead of P star, and the buyers are paying a lower price per unit, so P prime prime instead of P star. Now, in order to think about the welfare in this market, we're going to have to think about consumer surplus, producer surplus, but also what's happening to the government, because the government is the body that is paying for this subsidy. And in particular, this, the government is going to give some subsidy per unit. And remember, we're trading up to Q prime units. So in fact, and remembering that the vertical distance between D and D plus subsidy is equal to the amount of the subsidy, we can see the cost of the subsidy to the government as this rectangle here. And it has a base, Q prime, and height, the amount of the subsidy. So Q prime times subsidy is equal to the cost to the government. Now let's think about what the consumer surplus is going to be now that we've imposed the subsidy. Well, now it's the case that the consumers are consuming more, they're consuming Q prime, and they have a lower price per unit. So we're still going to identify the consumer surplus as the area beneath the demand curve above the price, but now the price is lower and we're consuming more. Now, a common question here from students is, why don't we use the new demand curve? And of course, we could do that. What we need to make sure is that we use the price of the seller's price. And the reason why we use the seller's price instead of the buyer's price is because if we use the demand curve, which takes into consideration the subsidy, 
and the price which takes into consideration the subsidy we're double counting the subsidy so to speak so you can use this this top triangle if you want to just make sure you understand exactly what's going on now let's just go back to our initial shading in of our consumer surplus before we impose the subsidy good and let's switch back to after the subsidy and we're going to think about how it's changed so before and then after and what I would like you to recognize is that our consumer surplus has increased by this amount and that's not unexpected it's the case that as the result of the subsidy as I've been saying the consumers get their unit for less than they did before and they're consuming more so our consumer surplus has increased by this amount our producer surplus we can do a similar sort of analysis it's still the area above the supply curve below the price but now it's the case that the producers are selling more so q prime again it's above q star and also they have a higher price p prime is above p star so that's their that's their producer surplus after the subsidy has been imposed let's compare it with the situation from before the subsidy was imposed and then after and then again so we can see the difference is this area here and again this is to be expected because of the subsidy we're trading more and the producers are getting a higher price per unit so their producer surplus has increased now the reason why and if we put these two next to each other we can see that they almost make up that rectangle that i identified before as the cost to the government and this is very interesting if we impose the cost to the government on this we can see that the government has injected all of this money into the industry. Now, some of that money has been transferred to the consumers as consumer surplus. Some has been transferred to the producers, but then there is a little bit left here, which has been lost to the system. Now, this is going to be our, our dead weight loss, and I'm going to cover it, color it in black here. Great, so uh, that's a good place to just review now and to see what's happened. We've had an increase in producer surplus, an increase in consumer surplus, but what we noted before was that the cost to the government on net exceeded both of these increases. And that part of the injection of the government into the industry that wasn't passed on to the producers or consumers, that can be seen as our deadweight loss. Okay, I hope that helped and um, I hope that you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and check out my channel for any other videos on economics. Please leave a comment below. I hope most of all though that you guys are really enjoying studying economics and that you guys are having a good day.